Hello, my name is Carol Mae Wittick. Welcome to HER Conversations, Tools for the Awakening Woman. HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. What is the awakening? This is the moment in time when humanity rises up out of the darkness. Who is awakening? Each one of us present on planet Earth today reclaiming our sovereignty, seeking greater possibilities in our reality and looking for solutions. We know being awakened is not a lofty ideal, but a necessity. If we can transform ourselves, we can change the world. Guests on Her Conversations will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. Listen to their stories, hear how they are in service to the world. Let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. My guest on this week's Her Conversation is mentor, speaker and advocate Jason Archdale. During this episode, he shares his story of spiritually awakening after attempting suicide 10 years ago. We also talk about him discovering his purpose and connecting to his inner self. In response to the concerning effects on mental health that COVID and the government responses are created, Jason has created a suicide awareness movement. So as always, I begin by asking my guest. HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel your most hurt? Really, I've got to, I've got to go back to my past, if that makes sense. I've got to go back to my past and then look where I've come from. Mm-hmm. All right, because if you imagine the 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 past is is somewhere you've been, excuse me, been, but really doesn't have a purpose anymore apart from lessons and the future's not even here. So the only moment we've got is the now. So that's that's when I feel my highest um, energy vibe. And, and it, it takes a lot of work to do that, you know, to, to stay in the moment. You know, because your mind just <laughs> just wants to fire off into the future, doesn't it? And, and into the past all the time. Because it's how we're conditioned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so it does take a lot of work. And I say that to a lot of people who message me. You know, how... How do I stop this mundane thought process that I'm going through right now? It's like, well, you need to, <laughs> it's a practice. You need to be in the now, but you must do it. But, you know, it takes work. So I don't say that lightly, you know. Mm. But um, so that's, that's where I feel that, you know, where my creativeness happens it, it, sort of in the now, if you like, if that's what you were referring to. So. Well, it's, it's a question that has no correct answer other than the answer that you give it. So yeah. that's, the, that's the criteria. What's your answer to the question? There is no correct answer. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's who yeah. you are. And you were talking a little, you know, you just kind of talked about the past or just mentioned the past just then. Um, mm-hmm. What would you say, you know, and also to the extent that you want to share has been has it been about your past that has shaped your present and what you're offering in the now and and who you are as as a person right now all right so so um many many years ago too many to count right now but i so i joined the army when i left school I had an amazing life, you know, a life of adventure, if you like, when you join the army and you go around the world. I became a tank driver and, you know, jumped out of airplanes and, and with parachutes, by the way, <laughs> and, uh, and did everything I wanted to do as, as, a, as a young guy I wanted back then and then got into relationships and, and whatever. Yeah. And then somewhere along the way, it kind of went wrong. Right, so I'm now talking 30, plus 35 year old, and I've left the army by this point. And, and um, I, I was in a marriage. I've got a five-year-old daughter. And I've been in this marriage for quite a long time. We've been in this relationship for a long time. Mm. Right, okay, bear in mind, I, was, I, I joined the army straight from school, so I was a free spirit. Um, traveling the world, if you like, and doing this adventure, crazy, crazy stuff. And then I almost feel, I almost feel like, oh, that stopped, right? But yet wanted to keep going, right? And and I was in this relationship, this marriage, this family routine that that we 
a condition through life to just say, well, this is what you've got to do, right? You've got to kind of do your crazy stuff and then you've got to meet somebody, you've got to get engaged, you've got to get married, you've got to get a house, you've got to have a kid, get the white picket fence and all this stuff, right? And live happily ever after. Mm, it wasn't quite like that for me, all right? Um, so over the years, I started to build up this anxiety. And it was only very tiny at the beginning. Um, you know, little nudges of anxiety. And then started to feel down quite a lot. And uh, I'm just thinking there's something more. There should be something more to my life than what I'm living right now. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I love the bones of my daughter to bits, all right? And never change that. But I always felt there was something more to be had, but I felt trapped towards the back end of the, the relationship. Now, I'm not saying the relationship was the, um, you know, was the downfall of, uh, of what I'm about to talk about, but um, it was certainly a big part of it. And so we'd, we'd got the house, we'd got the car, we'd got the, the child and, and whatever, but we were, we were getting into debt as well. And the, the housing market, crash happened um and we'd not long since bought the house we'd renovated the house not long since bought it and so i were borrowing off credit cards and transferring balances and uh, to a point where i'd actually maxed out and got around thirty thousand pounds worth of debt on credit cards just for survival it wasn't for buying tvs or stupid stuff it was just day-to-day -day things right because i had a business that a decorating business back then that was on its knees. I wasn't really that wisely in business to know how to market it. I wasn't up on social media back then. So it was, it was failing. And so was my marriage as far as I was concerned, right? My wife at the time had no idea because all this was being kept inside of me. I wasn't outwardly speaking about this. And so this tiny bit of anxiety that I told you about that, that was there years ago started to exaggerate and it was getting worse and worse, the anxiety, the fear. Okay. And um, so I lived with three companions for a long time and three companions for me were fear, anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they were constantly there. You know, it's almost like they're loyal. They, they don't leave your side. And those times where you feel this nudge, it's not a physical nudge, it's, a, it's just a nudge. And it's fear and anxiety and depression that wakes you up at three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Just so you can start thinking again. And what you think about is the same crap that you thought about the day before and the day before that. And 80% of it is negative, right? So you're on this spiral and you don't sleep. So then when you wake, you're tired. And then you've got, you've got to go try and get some work for this depressing business that's failing, right? And then you know that the housing market's crashed, so you the house is going to go. So anyway, yeah, ultimately the house got repossessed. And I just couldn't cope anymore. And... I, I told my wife in November of 2010 that I just didn't want to be in this relationship anymore. Um, I couldn't be here. So immediately she, um, she took my daughter away, her and my daughter, and, and went to live with her mum. So here I am living in this three bedroom house that we built and not built, but you know, built as a home. Um, in the middle of a housing market crash, but my car had been taken away from me. The, the house now had been served, was about to be repossessed. Uh, I've got £30,000 worth of debt. Um, my business, the decorating business, wasn't earning me any money. I think I had £3.50 in my bank account. All right. And um, I had one of those sticks that you put into the electric meter that you have to top up at the pay points. I couldn't even afford to put any money on uh, to heat the house during, and this was freezing cold part of the year it was December and it was, it was massively cold when I decided to do all this all right and uh, so I'd, I'd been <clears throat> I'd been out somewhere and I forget where I'd been but um, I'd come back and I just remember it being bitterly bitterly cold because 
it, I just couldn't get warm. And I, I closed the door behind me this one freezing cold night and I just fell to the floor like a and I'd wait. I was a mess and tears just streamed down my face. It was like Niagara Falls, it just didn't stop. And the thing I can remember so vividly was just wanting my daughter to be there, just just to speak to me and hear her words and just cuddle me and just say, Daddy, everything will be okay. But I knew it wasn't okay. Mm. Right? It, it wasn't okay. There, there was a problem. I had a problem. There was something going on and I couldn't understand what it was. Uh, and, and I was crying that uncontrollable crying. I saw no way out of, of this mess that I was in. And the crazy thing is, <laughs> my three companions, the fear, the depression, and the anxiety, almost, it's almost like they were speaking to me at the same time. They said, all they had to say was three words, just do it. Hmm. And my, although my face was wet through with the tears, the crying, kind of stopped it was like okay did I just hear that but I kind of knew what they meant as well so if you've ever been in a position where you've been so bitterly cold that your bones are so cold you you find it hard to walk out I felt like this because I've been on that floor for quite a long time I managed to pull myself up from from the floor and walk, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five paces from the hallway to the kitchen. And just with the words of just do it in my mind all the time. And as I got to the kitchen, just went to the, uh, the, the bottom cupboard and it's where we kept all the medicines and things. And I did, I did the thing that most people do, and that's with a bottle of whiskey. I proceeded to take tablets, and it, and yeah, went through with attempting to take my own life. Mm. I wanted to check out. I'd had enough. I saw no way out. And hearing those words of "just do it" just confirmed to me, I, you know, you know where those where those voices came from. Well. You know, you don't know at the time, but you kind of know. I know now, these so many years on, that these were on my these were my limiting belief voices, right? Because I was riddled with limiting beliefs and and um, lack of value and self worth. So yeah, so with the whiskey, I took the I took the tablets, and that was it, right? It, it was done. The pain should go now. This is the way out. And so I fell to the floor again. But I think within about five minutes of taking those tablets, three more words came to me and this was like sergeant major it was firm but it was fair it was one of those voices that when you hear it you take note and those three words were call the ambulance mm. and just as I did when I heard the just do it it kind of stopped me in my tracks and You've kind of just got to go with it. And it said it again, call the ambulance. Now, everything I know that I had had been cut off 
right? Everything that I I know, you know, the, the house was being repossessed. The, you know, my credit cards were maxed to the hill. The full, uh, my my car had been taken away. I was cut off from the world. My phone had been cut off that that very evening. But you, so I was, I felt like I was cut off from the world. I couldn't even speak to anybody. Okay, but I'm like, how can I, how can I call them once? But I just did. I went to dial 999, but you can dial emergency numbers when even when you've been cut off. So there's a blessing there. Right. So I called the ambulance and you know the relief it felt to just speak to a person. This person wanted to help and she went through the motions of, you know, telling me, you know, the ambulance is on its way now, you've called it. And but you know, my my approach then to this person speaking to me on the phone was almost like, well, I'm going through the motions, but it, it doesn't matter now because I've done it, right? I've taken the tablets. I was told to take the tablets. I was told to check it out. It's done. So you can send 10 ambulances, but by the time you get here, I'll be, I'll be off this plane. I won't be here. It was almost blase, cavalier, you know? So after hanging up from, um, after hanging up from the emergency services, I, walked with a bottle of whiskey in my hand uh, around into the, the living room. And the living room is not a place I've been in for months since making the decision to end the relationship since my wife, uh, you, you know, took my daughter out. Because the lounge was where we had the memories, right? Where you would sit on an evening and play with your daughter or have the, your daughter's birthdays or Christmases. And, you know, that's the the happy times. And I, I didn't ever go into that lounge. and. So I had to face a big demon. Mm. And this, almost like this block of ice hit me. It was a freezing cold, like just walking into an an igloo. But I walked to the fireplace where I had my favorite picture of my daughter. The photograph just sat there. And I took this picture and I just laid on the couch. And I put her picture face down on my chest. And I just said a few words to her out loud and just said, I'm sorry, darling. I've let you down. And I closed my eyes and I waited to die. That was the end for me. But it wasn't to be that way, was it? Because here I am. (laughs) Um, Within, I think within minutes of of saying those words, uh, the big bold figure wearing a big illuminous yellow jacket from the ambulance paramedic responder came bouncing in and, you know, broke broke the awkward silence and just said, uh, because we're from Yorkshire here, from, from up north in Yorkshire, and you said, hey, up lad, have you been having a bit of trouble over this Christmas? <laughs> you know, and that, that was like almost like bringing you back to reality, all right? Um, you know, so, and that was it. It was like then the, the hustle, the bustle, the people coming in with a stretcher or coming in with these machines to check you and, you know, the beeping, the clicking, the radios going, you know, the, this busyness going on that at one minute I was feeling on loan with no way out and, and then poof, all this stuff going on, this activity. And so then taken away to hospital to, to get all my checks done and, um, and there you go. So that, that, that was the, yeah, so that was the night of uh, 10 years ago in, in 2010. So how did you journey out of that space? What, what, I mean, what were the immediate things that happened, say, over the next week and month and year? And how did you start to bring it together? How did you learn from it? Mm. With help. Um, and firstly, I will say, I don't know what 
kind of listeners you have, but um, I will say immediately I, I had spiritual help, right? Um, because uh, prior to what I did, I wasn't spiritual at all, mm. okay? So I was taken into hospital on whatever time. Uh, I cannot remember what time. I, and it was evening time, but I can't remember what time. But when all the checks have been done and you settle down and you get taken to the ward and you sit in your bed and you can't sleep because there's so much stuff going on. Um, so I just... So I just sit there and all I see is the nurse's station with the, the lamp on and the odd person scuttling around and look at the toilet or whatever. And and then I look at the clock and it was 3. It was 3 a.m. And just as I looked at the clock at 3 a.m., I just heard these voices again. Now, I keep mentioning voices now. Uh, I'll refer to this again in a second. But those voices said... Um, we're here to help and you have a job to do. So when I refer to hearing voices, the, the hearing voices is not a crazy thing, right? What people think, oh, the guy's hearing voices is psycho, right? It's not. What it is, it's because you're so quiet that you can hear your own inner self talking to you. Okay, and that's why I say it's yourself talking, it's your inner um, being right because when you're so busy doing busy things right and keeping busy you don't hear your true self that's giving you the answers all the time okay so i was in this state of quietness so so quiet and thankful to be alive okay that i was able to hear okay and um, the quietness and hear the voices that we are here to help and you've got a job to do so it kind of, I almost like, so it's like going through the dark night of the soul that night, okay? So I'd, I'd had the rebirth, I'd had the awakening, I'd gone down, I understand now after all these 10 years that I had to go down to my darkest, deepest place to understand the hurt, the pain. Like I was never meant to check out. I didn't know that at the time, mm. okay, but you've got to go down to the deepest, deepest, darkest places, right, through the dark night of the soul to understand what it's like, okay? Um, but what I didn't understand then, what, what I knew, okay, what was true that I knew was, okay, um, I'm here to help. I'll get that, I'll take it. But what I didn't know was how. But what I kind of found then was spirituality that evening from hearing that. And so what I did when I went on a, a spiritual development, if you like, so trying to connect with my spiritual side. So um, almost immediately afterwards, a friend of mine introduced me to another friend who, you know, I'd never met this person. Uh, we'd gone to the cinema. I know it sounds crazy, right? You just come out of hospital and you go to the cinema. But it was <laughs> it's like, um, it, it was almost like, New Year, whatever, a few days after New Year, it was quite kind of empty. Uh, it was just chill out in the cinema. Uh, afterwards, I was still throwing up, right, um, in the cinema. Not in the cinema, but, you know, running, running at the toilet. But um, my friend said, I think you could benefit from meditation. So she then took me to meditation. Okay, and there you go, I found meditation. So, uh, and, and I've done quite a bit from there on. So I started on this journey and I liked it. I liked the connectedness of it and, you know, connecting with myself, connecting with spirit, connecting with universe, connecting with energies. Okay. And I liked that. Um, I liked it at the time. So I went on that development path and I went on personal development, you know, reading, um, YouTubing, development, you know, mm. um, something I'd never, ever done before. Um, but I was still me, so I still went into relationships, still got them wrong, still broke up, still broke, <laughs> got broken hearted, you know, because you've still got to do the roller coaster of life, right? You've still got to go up, you've still got to come down, and you still go through learnings, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, but fundamentally, the, the most important thing for me was that I made a decision to change my life that night. And once I made that decision, uh, situations, circumstances, people 
came into my life because I made that decision. Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's totally, it's always down to a decision. It's always down to, um, it's, it's a, a decision is, is, is a turn on a hair, really, isn't it? Really, it's not this uh-huh. big thing. I think people think, oh my God, a decision is this whole thing. It's like, you just go, okay, that's the end. And this is the new chapter. And then with you going into that space and, fe- you know, and, and removing yourself from the old you and whatever, whatever you had to do in your mind to do that, then, like you said, started to bring new things and new people. And, you know, and, it, and then it, the thing is then, what I'm sure you might be able to speak on this as well, is when you do make that decision to change and, you know, you're like, okay, my life is completely different. And even though most people wouldn't know that you've literally just changed your life at that point, but in your head, it's like, I'm a completely new person. Um, new things just start to turn up and it starts to turn up almost it starts to turn up easily without the effort that you think it's going to be. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. it's, you make a decision and something changes within you and you know, it's, it's different. Suddenly everything, it's, it's a completely new day. Um, mm-hmm. So tell me, so, so what else were other things that started to come into your life? I mean, when did you make the decision to start to offer yourself as you're a healer basically you know when did you when did you feel ready to step into the public arena and offer your experience and see that your experience was necessary because Mm -hmm. had you had you have not been through any of that you would not be able to offer anything along these lines not say you couldn't offer anything but you wouldn't be able to help people uh, in, in the way that you're able to help people right now with the experience and also be able to tell a story in such you know the way that you paint the picture everyone's there and they understand they can see it they can feel it you're telling the story and so you made a decision to rise up from that and also use that point in your life as a as a as a purpose how did that turn around? Okay, um, so so you mentioned that I'm a healer, uh, and I, I get that people um, put this title on people like us that want to change the world, want to change people. Okay, and I take that. All right, but what I tend to say is that I I went through my own healing mm-hmm. so that I can speak my words, speak my story, with a view that other people will feel inspired to heal themselves Mm -hmm. okay um that wow yeah shoot i I can do that yeah um and believe it or not um although this happened to me 10 years ago what i'm doing now is only very recent because because i'm so connected to universe if you like or to energies okay I have to feel things, right? And if something doesn't feel right for me, I won't do it. So the timing just felt right um, last year, and it was last September. But I tried to do this a few years ago, believe it or not, what I'm doing now, I tried to do it a few years ago, and, and I said to my friend, um, who was there 10 years ago when I went through all this. So I said to my friend a few years ago, I want to be a motivational speaker. I want to tell my story. He said, yeah, cool. I think you've got, it's just as, it's as blunt as this. Yeah, cool, great. I think you've got a great story. Yeah, but you're not ready. <laughs> you, know, it, you know, it's like, oh, okay, right, cool. <laughs> um, you know, this guy's a business coach, by the way, so he has got a little bit of something about him. So it wasn't just some guy who's uh, jealous of, uh, of me wanting to be this. This guy has really got my back, right? He's one of my best friends. He's almost like my earthly angel. He was there at the beginning and helped me through it, right? Amazing. So he said, uh, yeah, cool, great, amazing story. So powerful, but you're not really cool. Great. Okay. So I, mm, okay. So I went on with my business, <laughs> business and carried on. Right. Um, a few years later, um, I'm now in a, I'm now in a relationship uh, with the person that I thought was the one, right? You know, that one where it's all encompassing, you, 
it's like that permeable membrane, you know, it's like you're molding into each other and you go on holidays, you live together, you know, just, and then bang, five years later, the, the girl don't want to be with you anymore. Mm. Right, just not because of me, but because of her own demons. She couldn't give what I could give, all right? Uh, I was giving massively. I was giving almost like 70% of, uh, of, of, of the relationship. And, and now this is, the, this is the thing that I will say to most people. When I'm in a relationship or, hang on, say that again. When I used to be in relationships, I used to give myself to them and nothing to myself. And this is important because I used to want to build relationships and give to that person and, and want to build the family, the home. But I forgot about myself. I'd never give myself dreams or goals and want to be independent. So it's almost like I was codependent. All right? uh, and just building that relationship and not building my own relationship with myself. Um, and so I was so loving, so caring, so giving, um, so tactile, so attentive, right, to, to the person I was with. Uh, and it was such a great relationship for such a long time, or so I thought. And then that person's demons came out from years ago. She hadn't healed herself. Um, and so felt she couldn't give in balance to what I was giving. So she had to kind of walk away from that. That rocked me. All right, so we're building up to now the point where I'm doing what I do, right? So that rocked me. And that was last September. Yeah, so very fresh, right? Um, that was last September. And it, it really, really hurt. Really mm. kind of crippled me because when you don't expect it and it blindsides you, you're like, wow, shit, you know, I was crying again like Niagara Falls. It's like, shit. It's like, shit, okay. So that I've got to go through this pain. Go go through the grieving period, right? So there's there's the stages there. You've got to go through the, the grieving period and then the acceptance. Right? Yeah, okay, this is done. But let's have the pain, but let's choose not to stay in suffering. Mm -hmm. right? Because if you stay in suffering, then your life ain't going to go anywhere. So that's when I accepted it. I accepted it. And I was having a conversation with my friend in... in um, just have, We're out in a burger or something in some, some place and... And he said, you know what? He said, you ought to make a video because you're good at talking. So I just made this video and created a little YouTube channel. It's nothing to shout about, but it's just to give me just a, a bit of a, an outlet. And so I created this video of, of my own, of what I was actually feeling. So I put the camera on, press record, and I put it all out there for the world to see, you know, because I knew there'll be other people going out there doing, sorry, out there, feeling the same crap I was, right? And I watched that video back, and although it wasn't the best video at the time, it, it helped me quite a bit, right? And it got quite a lot of likes and views and people saying, wow, I really like that. It was so down to earth. And so I started to get a buzz for making videos. <laughs> and then I kind of had this mm, moment of this is it. That time a few years ago when my friend said, you're not ready. Right? Now, the voice said in my head then, now you're ready. Mm. Right? Because what had happened is I've been broken up with. I'm single. It was now time to start living my dreams and my goals. Right? And I found an outlet through videos and through my voice. And so I started to, d to develop that and started creating facebook posts and videos and uh and whatever you, and then um, it started to snowball people were liking them because they were relevant it was true to life stuff people were feeling this stuff okay so what i talked about what i talk about even today is just my own experiences of life and and what i've gone through okay it's not stuff that i read on um in in newspapers or whatever you are just I decide to watch YouTube and put a post out about it it's from my own experiences and people got that and um and I thought right okay there's something in this now so I so I almost created what I've got now this 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 mentor me Jason actually on the mentor okay this that people need this um and so here I am now doing this now so since September to now so yeah so just over a year now of doing this.
and um, so it's that. And so yeah, so now I'm the empower, uh, empowerment mentor. Um, and it, it, it went massively. It went, you know, when you know you've got a purpose and that purpose just kicks you on. Mm. Well, it went so quick. That decision, that realization, again, when I made, right, this is it. And everything fell into place. Once I made that decision, right, this is what I'm doing now. And it wasn't to be the motivational speaker I wanted to be years ago. It was, it was to help people. And now I'd found out what it was. You know, 10 years ago, I didn't know what it was. Now I found out this is what it is through my voice, through my experience, through my my coping strategies and techniques that literally saved my life. I can now help other people. Mm. And so the universe had my back and helped me, you know, create the website, create everything, the, the Facebook, the post, the videos, you know. Um, so here we are, and I'm enjoying it. Good. Good. Well, I'm, I'm sure that's what brings people to you. One, that you're enjoying it, but two, also that you're effective and relatable. You know, so those, those are the main things is, that, you know, when people start to get on, on different kind of like levels of stuff, then maybe they're relatable, but maybe they're not accessible you know, in, 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 yeah. in a way, shape or form as well. But it depends. It depends what you're looking for when you want to connect with somebody like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and when, and w- actually, when we spoke before as well, you, w- you were saying that obviously we're in 2020. So 2020 has made everyone um, look at whether, whether we realize it or not. It's, it's put you in a position where you've had to really reassess your life and your business and the way that you work. But then also, and I, I know that I can say that because I've had to change and tweak things, is oh. what, what, I'm, what I'm putting out into the world and how I'm serving. So it's not so much about, oh, am I just going to work from home for now? Mm. It's more about like <clears throat> seeing that there is a shift in consciousness happening as a result of all of the turmoil and all the shifts and all of the things that are happening in the world. And some people are coping with it um or, or finding ways through it or, or discovering new sides of themselves and um others not so much you know because mm-hmm. they for one reason or another it's really bringing up things that maybe or, or have they've been busy like you said you like for most people when you have when you're working and then when you've got a home life a partner mm-hmm. uh, a family and 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 a house to run when you get back from a full-time job you're too busy to be still and be quiet and listen to the voice of the universe speaking through you it's like who's got time for all of that stuff and then now you know we have and on top of that then we're witnessing like a collective dark night of the souls having this conversation with a friend of mine earlier um that this is kind of what's happening and i think if you've already experienced a couple of dark nights of the soul <laughs> in mm. your, you know, cause they, you know, I, they don't, you don't just have one. I think you have the mm. pleasure of having a few, right. Um, once you've had a few of those initiations, you can kind of recognize it. And, you know, when another one comes along for you and you're going through some stuff, you can kind of move through the pain a little bit quicker and you can get the lessons and grab it mm. and kind of go through it. The first one feels like absolute death. Well, it's kind of, yeah it is a death of ego. It's a death of perception. Mm. It's a, you know, it's a real shifting of, um, one word I, one way I, I heard it, um, described the dark night of the soul is the explosion of the external world and the implosion of the internal world or maybe the other way around, but basically it's like what you project and what you, what you think you are out there just disintegrates. And then suddenly the true side of you actually comes out. It's a, for, for my, for me, the dark night, the soul simply it, it, it's an ending of who you were. Mm. Right. You, you rebirth into something new, you, you know, it, it's simply that, you know, you end in something. So the dark night of the soul is not, you're not going to check out, right? You're just going to awaken. Mm. You're going to find your spiritual side. But it's, but isn't it interesting that you might have somebody who wants to connect when they have this busy life, they're, they're at work all day, they come back, they have to feed the kids, they have to feed the husband, and they so want to connect to spirit, they so want to do meditation, but for the craziness that they might get called, by the husband they won't do it 
or mm. sorry, or the wife or whatever, right? So they just carry on watching the TV or watching, you know, being busy. And then it's only when maybe the relationship breaks down and years later you have this doubt out the soul that you kind of think, wow, you can do this now. And that's where I was, right? So I was in these busy relationships and it was only when I got broken up with, right, in September last year. Twice, if you, if you go back to 2010, when I ended that relationship and I found my spiritual side in the hospital and then the last relationship in September as well, when I was on my own and it's now time to achieve my goals, okay. Um, so, so that's when I really connected and, um, you know, everything I do now is through, is through guidance. And what I mean by guidance is, is I work through feelings, mm. right? So what I feel from, you know, cause I'll ask a question, you know, whether it be silently or, or aloud, I'll ask the question what, what I'm meant to do or whatever. Um, and that's not taking any, anything away from, you know, you, you're supposed to have your own responsibility and take your own have the accountability for your own actions, but ask the spiritual questions, give me some guidance on, on this, right? Um, and then that feeling will come or that sign will show. Mm-hmm. All right, and I, I don't rely on it 100% because there's got to be an element of common sense as well. We, we know that, right? Um, but... Um, yeah, I mean, now even in terms of relationships, um, you know, we know what we don't want, so we we can have what what we want, right? And and that that's friendship or romantic. And the people that are coming into my life now, I have a very very close small circle uh, for a particular reason, right? Um, because you can manage it better as well, can't you? And, <laughs> and things and. Um, but even the people that come into my life now, um, you know, I can sense and, and uh, you know, energetically whether they're good for me or not, mm. you know, for mm. my higher self. Whether, you know, because everything's always got to be, uh, is it good for my higher self? Is it getting me to where I want to be? If it's not, then leave it alone mm. or walk away from it. Because, you know, like, so I talk about the dream creations, all right? So... Um, achieving our dreams and we can achieve our dreams through a process and a process that I put into place what I talk about because I'm a mentor to my clients through an eight-step process so throughout these 10 years of me getting to where I want to be right now right is I worked out that I'd actually done it through a process right and and so I call it now the eight-step process to achieving your dreams and and it's it, it, it's a I would say it's oh, something we use every day, but we're just not conscious of it. Okay, and it's so simple in the fact that you can say, well, it's about making a decision uh, about making decisions. It's about committing to this. So I can't speak. Making decisions and committing to them, and being focused and having relentlessness and taking action and believing and gratitude. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so when people say to me, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of that? Well, okay, so we've got to really assess where you are in life first and what it is you want. And, um, you know, but it's having the true belief then in yourself because we live for so long in a conditioned world where, where um, you know, people can tell us uh, this ain't going to work or that's not going to work or you're not good enough. And you start to believe it, right? Because you hear something so many times, you start to believe it. Uh, and it's trying to get that back again um, and detaching yourself from the emotions of the past because the past can, uh, how many people live in the past? Uh, most people live in the past, right? And they define uh, their future from the past. Well, so they're about to walk into a situation they recognize from the past. They know it didn't work, so they're not going to do it, mm. right? Because it didn't work before, right? So it's about now saying, um, so people that live in the mind will recall a situation from the past and know what that feeling is. So I call this a thinking feeling universe, right? So you had a bad toxic relationship and that created some bad, bad energy, right? The minute you start thinking about that bad toxic relationship, you remember and start to feel those emotions from the past, right? Well, the same goes for happy times. 
So if you can remember those when you had a, an amazing massage on the beach in Bali or something and, and the relaxed chillness it was and the sun beating down and, you know, and I don't know, the, the, the warmth and people talk, right? So you, you've got all that, like a snapshot, like a camera has taken that. That's your memory, right? The camera's taking that picture. So that, that's the same thing. So, so what you've got to do is the problem is not the situation or the circumstance of the past. The situation is your attachment to that, right? Um, so your emotion um, of that situation. So for us to move forward in life, we've got to kind of remove that emotion that's attached to the situation, um, but then change that and then think, okay, and create a vision of the future. Does that make sense? So instead of yeah. having that vision all the time and living in the past, mm -hmm. which most people do, they live in the past vision, right? Is create now and create from the now, right? And create that vision in the now of the future, if that doesn't sound too woo-woo, right? So you sit here now and create what your future life is going to look like and, and bring the senses in, create the what, what, what's it smell like? What's it taste like? What's it feel like? Who's there? What are the sounds? Get into the feeling. What's it feel like? Oh, God, I'm so enjoying this feeling right now. I love it. I love, and remember that and anchor it. So every time you want to create, you go back there, right? And, and, and attach your emotion to that feeling and disassociate from the feeling of the past. You know, so, so that's, that's kind of where we are um, with creating for the future dream and the future goals and future life right mm -hmm. so. no it's good no it's, it's a great one i'm i'm always um here but you know <laughs> building <laughs> building building a picture of of the the next step and what what things are going to look like in you know what i'm what i'm bringing into the reality or the new reality and it's great because um I think if it's there if you notice it, but the energy is different right now and things can actually roll a lot quicker. There's, there's like a real kind of move on things as well, even though if you look outside in the world, it does look like, I mean, it's all about perception really. Um, but you know, one, one thing I did want to ask you about as we're in the UK and it's the 4th of November and we're about to go into um, lockdown, Jumanji round two. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> In the UK. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know. um, and the thing is, like, we, we kind of, you know, different people are having really different experiences about what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And some people are seeing it we're seeing it on different perspectives. I don't want to say levels. So it feels like there's a hierarchy and some people are witnessing it and seeing what it's actually exposing about the world and the games that are being played on humanity. But then there are other people that are really, really struggling, really struggling to, um, to see any end to it. You know, they're, they're kind of caught in a reality that's really rooted in fear. One, because they're being pummeled with fear, unfortunately. And, you know, the fear, the fear, the fear guns working overtime and it's actually really sticking with people. Mm. Um, how has, have you noticed that people are reaching out to you more right now with their own, you know, not being able to see past what's happening now frightened for you know things that they see crumbling in their their lives like relationships their home their businesses their money um and potentially then having those three three words like you had 10 years ago that's you know just do it <laughs> like to get kind of like directing them that thinking that is the only way out when what is in fact happening is they're having a dark night of the soul a collective dark night of the soul and a, a personal dark night of the soul and we're kind of all going through it together um how have how have you been able to assist anyone who's reached out to you with with that kind of situation sure i mean yeah i mean listen my my phone blows up every night um you know because and the unfortunate thing is is i'm not a counseling service mm. so i can't i can't just 
get on there. I'm not this 24 hour answering service and what have you, but so I do what I can. Um, but because people see the post, whether it be a, a blog post or a video post, they think I've got all the answers to give them there and then, which is unfortunately I can't do that. All right. That's why I do the mentoring course, the program. Um, but what I'm seeing from this is that then when people message me, they say, have you got two minutes? And it's this bleep, dump brain dump of all their stuff. Right. And of what's going on in their life. Right. And, uh, and it could be, you know, the relationship that wasn't going too well prior to lockdown is now heightened and just isn't there at all anymore. Or the person who was fearful of losing their job has now lost their job. Right. And then can't really see a way out. Um, so yeah, so whatever scenario you can imagine has been told to me during this time and there, there's a lot of people that are scared, right? They're scared because they've been scared, I, I feel, by, by the constant barrage of media, right, of all of this. But um, instead of, uh, like myself, that would look at the media and look at that media, look at that media, look at that media and make my own decisions from that, right? They'll see just one media outlet and believe it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, so yeah, we, we've got a tougher job to do right now. Me and the other close people I know within the coaching industry, we've got a tougher job right now um, to try and... Um, so what I try to do is to bring people back to the now, Okay, it is because the now is the only time, right? Um, because there's no point when people start saying, what's going to happen in two months? You know, I heard a stupid comment today from one gov It might have even been Boris himself that said, this will all be done by spring. How the... F yeah, I don't want to swear, but how the frigging hell can they tell us, right, that a virus they don't know anything about is going to be done by spring? Unless they well, know something we don't know about, right? Well, they know something. Well, I, I would go for the latter in that they know something we don't know about unless you look. And it's, you know, it's got to the point now when it's, this is not necessarily solely about this health issue that we're, we're trying to dodge, you know? So for someone to be so emphatically clear about when this is over because even you know if we we're going to talk about this whole situation they already predicted that we were going to be in this situation way back when the you know the fatalities were were dwindling so it made no sense anyway so it's clear that it's it's something else um well they, they they've, they've obviously what they've done they've obviously succeeded in um creating that fear mindset within the, and I don't mean this derog in a derogatory way, but in the weaker minded people, the ones that are not awakened, the ones that are not strong enough to actually go, hang on a minute, there's something else going on here, right? Um, but it, so it takes the people like myself and the people that are awake and the stronger ones, okay, to help the, the these people that start to now come forward it's, it's divine time and there's a reason for everything why people on facebook see my post or see the video or say wow I'm, I'm, i've just seen this at the right time because i was about to do this or i'm going through this right now right um and so i try to bring people to the to the now uh, to you know listen create the the vision of your future because this is temporary however it ends this is temporary you know, however temporary it is, but you know, it won't last forever. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, so it, so it's it's rife out there right now of, of people, isn't it, of, of needing that help and support. So, and it's testing for us as well. Yeah, you know, people like us, the healers, the the mentors, the coaches. Because it's, I mean, there's a there's a number of ways and and um people like yourself myself and who are using their platform and their mm. their mm. vision and their skill and feeling that you know they've really got to do something at this point in time 
we all have moments, you know, we sure. all, we all have moments, like even like the past week or so when I was like sharing with a friend, it's just like, man, it's just like, it's been a little bit sticky then, you know, and especially then when you start to make it known that you kind of look at alternative narratives that may be possibly out there and like people are not necessarily always ready to hear that, which is fair mm. enough. Mm. Um, but then once people start to find things, then, you know, for me, it's like I, I get links sent to me like ad nauseum, you know, and there's only so much <laughs> there's only so much I can take on, you know, because some of it does relate to the work that I do because it's about me researching and then relaying it back on the other platform. So it's necessary for me to see things. But usually um, a lot of the time I've heard it, you know, a week or so before because there's kind of a lag on that also yeah um but it's it's i think this time as well is going to be very interesting for people to like you say we've had this opportunity and you know i'm looking at it as as an opportunity it's like winter doesn't bode well for me it's not my favorite time of the year (laughs) it's cold it's dark it's wet you know i want the sun i want all of those things but what i what it reminded me of and and the way that i reframed it way back for myself when i'm like okay one i'm not going to be out of the country this year um so i got over that one and then it's going to be dark and cold and you know they're they're restricting where where we potentially can 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 move around and you know i don't yeah. have an argument with somebody every time i leave the door mm-hmm. um so just I reframed it in that when I was younger, I used to do athletics. I was an athlete. I was a, I was a sprinter. So winter was always a specific type of training. And we changed our training up in winter to the training that we did in the spring. So for me, I'm like, I'm going to treat this like I used to train when I used to when I was mm-hmm. an athlete and when I did winter training. So it's mm-hmm. like you hunker down, you, you like, you really work on, you just have a, a, a process because it's very easy if you don't have a discipline and a goal to then kind of like veg out. And that quarantine 15 turns into a quarantine 45 by the time you come out in March, you know, and then where are you? And so it's like, I can turn it into something else. I'll, I'll really sharpen up on the podcast. I'll really get clear about other mm-hmm. things and I'll just really work on all the things for me and be really clear minded. And once you get that discipline going, and also it's like you're saying, taking time for yourself, once part of yourself can see that you're respecting yourself, um, it kind of just brings more in, it brings more positivity into yourself, that self-respect that you don't necessarily have if you're kind of giving out and being and doing Mm. and showing out in the world, you know, has, has it changed your routine or if it hasn't? Yeah. Um, I've had to adapt, of course I've had to adapt, but uh, generally I've been kind of the same, if you like, but just I just want to highlight something you just said there about um, you remembering um, uh, the, the discipline in the training, right? Um, and that relates to um, to what I talk about with my eight-step process, all right? And it's about having that discipline and that if we just follow the eight-step process, right? If I just talk to the clients about doing the eight-step process, so you will have, have had your training routine, um, hunker down, do all this kind of stuff, and all right. But if we can just say, look, we just go through the, we make a decision, we commit to that decision, we're relentless with it, we focus on it, we have gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, we believe. Okay, we. Do you know what I mean? So it's about being busy, but busy in a in a disciplined way. All right, but having structure in, in a sense that. Um, so all those things I've just talked about is that we do that anyway, but it's like we can just get so far into ourselves and throw our own pity party so many times that we forget mm. that we create our own reality. All right, and we can create even what's going on now. We can still create from that. All right, and what are we going to do? Are we going to wait until all this is over and then start creating, or are we going to start putting the foundations in now and start creating now? For when it's over, we've got something in place. Mm. So let's start now. All right, because there's a reason why the world, the universe, is doing this. Right. Maybe the universe is going through its own dark night of the soul because it's mm. going to have a rebirth, right? Um, you know, and then once that rebirth happened, wang, bang, 
those that were awakened enough during this lockdown period to start, like you said, like reframing and changing the way you do things during this lockdown, instead of throwing a pity party and going into your shell for six months, let's just reframe and go with the discipline because when it's all over and the universe says, right, okay, this is all clear, let's go for it. Are you going to have something to show? Are you going to have nothing to show for it? So I think it's a, I think it's it's a fair point to say that we need to be disciplined and still keep keep doing it. And yeah, I have my down days as well. I have days where I can't be asked. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know who 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 kicks the coach up the ass, right? And I do have a coach, by the way. And sometimes I've co- called my coach and she can't be asked, so we just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back the next day, right? And um, so I have my down days as well, and, and no matter how much I want to meditate, it ain't happening. So I just leave it and just let the day ride out. But that doesn't mean to say that the next day is going to be the same. It just means I'm not meant to do anything to that. I'm meant to just let the day happen. But the difference with that is that there are some people that just get stuck in that every mm. day, every day, every day. And then it becomes um, a week, a month, a year, right? And then that becomes then their life, their norm. Um, and they can't get out of it. They can't change it. Mm. And I, um, this, I was going to say, I think this time is also an opportunity for everyone as an individual to um, work out who they are, become sovereign, you know, and, and the mm-hmm. previous episode, I did a solo episode, which was all about sovereignty. I think because we've spent so long looking to parents, teachers, bosses, government, mm. prime minister, presidents, everybody else to kind of tell us who and what to do and where, and like we're sitting there at, at the prescribed time watching them and listening to them. And then they say something we like and we go along with it. And then they say something we don't like and we hate them. And then, then they say, sit down in your house for like a few, and, and you know, so you're always doing things and you block out that, like you say, toxic relationship, that codependent mm. attachment that we have to these people that are not necessarily doing it for our highest good. And if we're also not looking at multiple sources of information and you know if you want to look at the media fine but you know take a take a take a big handful of salt and realize it's coming through a specific lens and -hmm. then also if you want to go on facebook or youtube or anything just remember that not everybody knows everything so Mm -hmm. you've got to kind of take all these bits of information and then kind of like have them all there and then sit in yourself know who you are and then mm-hmm. start to breathe and go, right, what feels like it could be plausible? Or even even because we have the choice of that, it's like, if I follow this narrative, then it's going to create this world for me. Because one thing I've noticed, for the people who are really... Um, invested in the COVID story, the ones that are really invested in it, they all know people who've had it. But then when you start to when you start to peel the, the layers away, you realize it's kind of this false testing, not kind of thing. But the people who are really invested in it kind of know people who do. Mm-hmm. And the people who are like, I'm oh, not really sure about it. Don't know anybody. Don't know anybody. <laughs> don't know anybody, don't. anybody, anybody, anybody. And it's, it's bizarre. It's like, do you know? Do you know? I, I, I've heard of people who kind of got it and they're kind of like three or four times removed and then when Mm. you start to kind of ask real questions about well what were the symptoms or where did they have you find out there's a layer of the you know there's a load of other things that were going on as well as that so they would have Mm. been slapped with the label so it's all about creating creating that reality because when I go out into the world and remind you know I'm remind I'm like oh this story is still happening I forgot because you know I Mm -hmm. see it visually represented and also that people are still really jumpy in their skins about it and like today was a gorgeous day it was like one of those nice autumn days you know the colors are bright the sun's out I was really happy and like people are still jumping in the street to get away from me so it's an opportunity to kind of come and and find Mm -hmm. yourself yeah and that uh, yeah and that's that's crazy isn't it that you know how long is that going to go on for where people still turn around and expect to be to to be two meters away Hmm. Right, um, it's like, come on, get real. Okay, this thing's not in the air. It's not dropping from aeroplanes onto your body. You know, it's like, it's the flu, right? Um, 
but the 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 crazy thing is about all this is that during this lockdown period i created a movement uh called sam okay mm-hmm. um and sam stands for suicide awareness movement okay so um um because with myself being there as well um you know 10 years ago uh, attempting to check out and and uh, going through it I almost did there are many that do successfully check out all right but the the amazing stat that i read once was that um for every one successful suicide there are 17 failed right so just think how many successful suicides there could be if the failed ones went through it right so the the crazy thing is and uh, and i say this right now is that you know what's happening with all the mental illness right now right that we've got not we but certain individuals or certain parts of the government or certain um, brainwashed people to do with this covid right are focusing on the the ppe the they're focusing on the we must protect ourselves with masks we must stand on these circles on the floor because if you stand on the circle on the floor that protects you right if you wear a mask between the door to your table you're protected right but if you sit down at your table without a mask on it won't get you because the virus is that bloody intelligent <laughs> right but what about right um so this magic virus is killing everybody the super killer what about all the the mental illness and the the suicides right because prior to covid prior to hearing about covid there were around 800,000 deaths suicides every year that's prior to covid that's nearly a million people a year dying of suicides right what is it like now that's a year that's globally right what is it like now through covid mm. right uh, of people that were mentally ill but now can't cope anymore because of lockdowns and social isolation right I mean, we're talking one person every 40 seconds taking their life, right? Is this blood on the government's hands? Do they not get these stats? Of course they do. Do they not get told about it? The World Health Organization, for God's sake, has told the government that lockdowns is not the way forward. It's creating more pain than it is solution, all right? So I started this suicide awareness movement to basically create the awareness, does what it says on the tin, right? Create the awareness because it's this stigma of suicide it's the stigma of mental illness that is killing people because like me back then i didn't want to talk about it and so you go into isolation your own isolation your voluntary isolation and you just want to end it right and it doesn't care it, it, it doesn't matter how much people care for you whatever you don't see that so i so much want this movement to roll on because um there's a certain army of us right that believe in you know the herd immunity and let's just live with it now okay it's out there like the flu we live with herd immunity right it's we know it's going to come we know it's going to come every year uh, but we'll live with it so let's learn to live with this also but let's not take our attention off the biggest killers alzheimer's dementias suicides right they're the biggest killers not not the 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 covid Right, and so we, we need to raise the awareness of suicide and mental illness because that is killing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people every year. Yeah. Do you have you an idea? I know that there's no kind of main stats out at the moment, but in terms of how how more how 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 more amplified it is now as a result. I mean, we 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 can just we you know common sense just tells us mm. that it's not going to be good for everybody um, and it's going to hit a lot more people harder and people who might not have might might have been teetering before are just going to be kind of like pulled into an abyss i mean winter time is for people who really suffer at winter this is going to be a hard one i think it's going to be a massive one because there's those people that hate winter anyway i mean mm-hmm. you know those people that just want to hibernate anywhere over winter what's it like when you times that by the mental illness by the times that by uh, the lockdowns the, the crazy lockdowns uh, that are going on we don't have any um actual facts because um the way the office of uh, national stats report this is over a, 
um, over a period of time. And that period of time is, I think, about a year or something. But they haven't got to that reporting process yet, at that stage yet. Um, but one thing that came out was that um, reports to mental illness, uh, about mental illness to GPs or health uh, societies or Samaritans or things like that have, have gone up like 200%. Right. That's not suicides because we haven't got those stats and figures. So I don't want to just put out fake news there. But, you know, reports of people ringing up for mental illness. And, you know, the, the, the crazy thing is I've got a friend. And about one in four of us, by the way, will know somebody. Or one person will know about one in four people. Did that come out right? <laughs> like one in four of us will have, will have mental, mental illness. That <laughs> it came out a bit wrong, that, didn't it? Um, yeah. And uh, and so I've got a, I've got a, a friend whose mum is suffering massively from mental illness, and she rang up. The crazy thing is, she rang up on a Sunday to the crisis team on a Sunday, and you know, you know the response she got. Sorry, we're closed. Can you call back tomorrow? Wow. Yeah. Wow. She might not even be here tomorrow, right? Um, so what a response that was. I mean, anybody who's about to commit suicide wants to hear that, right? No. That's just going to finish them off. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So so the, there needs to be more done. There needs to be more awareness. There needs to be more, you know, because when all the COVID's done, when we're starting to live with it, the bigger, the bigger thing to attack then is all the mental illness. Mm. Because that's just, I'd hate to think when we get that report from the ONS, the, you know, from the stats, I'd hate to think where it is. Mm. If it was 800,000 a year, right? Put it this way, in 2018, there were 6,507, I believe, uh, deaths registered from suicide. And three quarters of those were men. Right. Because men just don't talk, right? And why, and do you, do you feel that there's a, a shift with men starting to feel that they're able to kind of open up a little bit more now? I think, I think there's the, the, there are different channels now for men to go to than there were a few years ago. But I still think there's that stigma at it because it's that hunter-gatherer thing, isn't it? That the men have to be seen to be strong, right? And if you're not seen to be strong, then you're weak you know, get over it, man, or man up or whatever, or psycho or whatever, right? Uh, and no guy wants to be like that. Um, whereas women, on the other hand, um, are different. Women uh, are built differently. They'll, they'll open up and they'll talk, mm. right? But the but the men won't. That's why three quarters, I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, the, the suicides affect women as well, but three quarters of men because the guys don't want to talk about it it's the stigma that's attached to it and you know that it's not manly to to have this mental illness and you know the crazy thing is once we start to realize or once we can start talking to, to some of these clowns in government right that mental illness is what it says it's an illness right and we should treat it as a medical condition just as we treat um heart disease or heart attack or a broken leg or whatever it needs treating like an illness like a medical condition right and i don't mean by going to your gp and giving you some antidepressants and saying on you go right i'm saying to get to the root cause of it because we need to get to the root cause and it's buried deep down and yeah okay i'm not advocating to come off any medication or antidepressants and if that's what you need to help me get through the day fair enough but let's also start bringing in holistic ways as well like through life coaches or coaches or mentors or people that can um help mm. you and be that buddy buddy holding your hand through these systems mm -hmm. they just don't they just don't um I, I don't think they've got that much of a respect for this sort of industry that knows that it can help i think it's, it's a case of giving out tablets and saying on you go yeah because yeah. it's not it, it's not seen as a well i mean stigma translated means disgraced that's what it is so yeah. i've seen i've seen how it works with the with the pharmaceuticals and you know it's not necessarily it's kind of a one-size-fits-all and you know in terms of 
doling out doling out the uppers and the and the downers and kind of playing playing a, a balancing game with somebody's emotions mm. and not really dealing mm. with the thing so um I've I've seen it close up so and when you know when I look at the way that people are suffering in their own way their trauma you know people are traumatized they don't even realize the the, the depth of the trauma that they're going to have to try and pick as well as maybe for them their children as well it's and i know this is not something you can enforce on people but it's really because they are not they don't have that connection you know if you had that connection if you had a, 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 some sort of practice to be um to kind of just calm yourself down and, and realize that you can pull out of the story and it not be real, even if it's for that moment, it's not real. It, it would make so much of a difference um, because there, there are a lot of people, even people that I know that are going through so much anxiety all the time of like, well, what happens if that goes and, you know, I've seen this thing and it's so they're, they're more awake to um, what's what's potentially happening as opposed to what's just coming out of being pumped out of the news but then they're still in anxiety in that line of thought anyway because it's like oh i'm reading all of these things and it's we could go here and we could go there and what we're going to do and that anxiety and that lack of connection is still not there so i think in this period of time it's for us to maybe guide or potentially throw out there with with and with, and with no apology as well I think before we're very much about the telling somebody something that has helped us that is more esoteric and then kind of like shaking up the woo-woo thing you know and discrediting everything that we've just said mm. um because you know just because it's kind of out of the norm but those are the things that have really helped us you know the, those are those those voices that connection i love silence some people have not mm. really I, I know some people would hate to spend as much time as i do in silence but i feel it's loud to me you know because i'm hearing so much i'm having so much conversation so then when something happens in the real world and it's and it's not really resonating it, it really feels like an imposition it's like i'm having a conversation here you know, I'm try- we're trying to sort stuff out mm-hmm. but the thing is if you don't have that then to be in your own space and to be in your own thoughts it's going to be really really disconcerting because you want the phone or you need to watch the telly or you need to have some music playing and just you, you do that don't you though i mean the, the people that are not awake and not connected you, you know they only feel connected when once they wake up and start putting on the social media yeah you know once they, 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 they've gone on the, the Facebook on the morning or whatever and, and okay, I feel better now because I've, you know, I've put my post up. Do you know what I mean? But, and, and it's so uncomfortable for them to just, like, say, for example, go for a walk and sit on a park bench and sit there for 10 minutes in silence mm. and just listen. Listen to what? Well, listen to silence. Mm. Because it's, like, when I was in the hospital bed at 3 o'clock, when I was in silence, deadly silence, that's when I heard the most, <laughs> you know, because yeah. it's when it's so busy, when, when you, you snooze so many times that you're so late that you get up, the coffee machine's going, you're late and you go for the bus and you get, and it's all chitter chat and about all this stuff, it's banging away and you're wishing around. You can't hear anything about from what's going on around you. And this is why, you know, the, the, the Buddhists call it the monkey chatter, the monkey mind, right? Yeah. The Buddhists, the Buddhists are the quietest people. You know, they'll <laughs> sit there and they can get, you know, it's, we're crazy. It's like this monkey chatter going on all the time that we can't hear what's meant to be said to us, our inner self talking to us, the answers, right? And we don't know the way out. We don't know what's coming next. We don't know. We don't need to know the how. And I know that's woo woo to some people. I know that. We don't need to know how. We just need to. We need to have belief in ourselves. We need to have belief in our vision and our goal. And uh, and trust, and trust that it'll all open up for us. Right. And when you have all that, and gratitude, gratitude is a massive thing. You know, when people say about, oh, my life is so shit, is it? Did you open your eyes this morning? Because if you open your eyes this morning, you've got another, you've got another chance to start again. 
right? You've got another chance to create your day the way you want to create it, right? Mm. So start with gratitude. Start with the, the first thing. I'm so grateful for opening my eyes. I'm so grateful for putting my feet on the floor and so grateful for this coffee machine and whatever, right? And the smallest thing you can be grateful for, bigger things will come and then you start being grateful for them, right? But believe me, if, you're, if you start to show the universe you're not grateful for the things the universe gives you, you're not going to get anything it, else. It, yeah, exactly. And it will take it away. Mm. Right. And then your life will be shit. Right. So, and then you'll have so much to be shit for. But <laughs> so, so, but being grateful for things as well and having belief in yourself and your dream, have an attitude of gratitude and a trust that it will all work out. And this is the hardest part about having trust and a belief in the unseen. Right. Because mm. that's what belief means it's believing in the unseen. But anybody who created anything special believed in the unseen. They just believed in their vision, right? Because everything that's created, and I'll challenge anybody to challenge me on this, right? Everything that's created in this world has been created first in your mind. Mm. And then it's manifested, right? I mean, like your phone that we're speaking on or the, the laptop or the microphone you're speaking into, right? It's got to be thought about first and then it, before it's created, right? So create that vision, create that dream in your mind and then work on the belief and the feelings, the emotions behind that, the trust that it will happen and open up. Get away from the negative past and your life will start to open up like the flower that it's meant to do. Fantastic. You've probably just answered this question that I was going to ask you anyway. <laughs> we'll I'll see. Ask it. Ask, ask it. I'll ask it away anyway. So the first one I would say is what tools have assisted in your awakening? My visualization. Mm-hmm. And that's very hard for some because there's a lot of people that are not visual people. Meditation is the big one. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes meditation takes different forms and that could be just either sitting in silence or doing guided meditation. And guided meditation, as you quite well know, is that you can get so many on YouTube. If you find it hard, get on YouTube. Right? Because there's so much on there. You want to type in YouTube for, uh, sorry, um, meditation for money or meditation for relaxation, meditation for sleep, meditation for a relationship, you'll find it. All right? Um, but meditation is the big one for me and, uh, being, being with myself, um, you know, sometimes solitude for me works so I can just take myself, me and myself to the park mm. and just be, just be, you know, that's weird, isn't it? To say that, but to just be, and, and what does that mean? It means just to be, just to be here, just to be on this bench, just to be on this bit of grass, just to be looking at that tree, to be, just be here in the now, in the moment. That's my, my kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, what tools would, would you share for the awakening? What tools would I share? Hmm. If they'd be different. Create, it, it, you've got to create that vision. You've got to be, you've got to be driven. Not, driven is the wrong word. You've got to be compelled, right? Um, get yourself away from the past, all right? And the way you can get yourself away from the past is to be um, working towards your future. So you do that in the now. That sounds weird, doesn't it? But you do that in the now. You work towards your future by the now. So in the now, you create your future. So create your future and by the vision you create in your mind. Take that vision out of your mind and put it onto a vision board. Mm. Right, that's one of the easiest fun things to do right now. I can tell people on this, uh, you, you know, on this conversation right now is to create a vision board uh, of images of what you want to do with, you know, it's the lifestyle you want, the dream house, the dream car, the holidays, travel, businesses, relationships, whatever you want to want. Take it out of your mind, get on Google images, create those images that resonate with you to do with the relevant topics and subjects and make this collage, make it fun, stick them on there and make this fun okay and get this vision board and stick it up somewhere that's uh, that's prominent in your house in your home wherever you are that you're going to see it um 
if you like, meditate on it. And, and meditation is just, what is meditation? Meditation is just being still, right? So that is to, to look at this vision board, maybe in the morning, on an evening, uh, not just to, to look at it, but to, to look at it and visualize it and to get that feeling of what it's going to be like when you've got that, that you're looking at, you know, manifested. Remember, because everything's created twice, first in the mind and then it, it, it's manifested. So make that vision come alive in your mind because, you know, you will bring it to life in reality. Amazing. And what are your favorite self-care rituals? How do you take care of yourself? Ooh, <laughs> bit per, bit personal, but I like to get a bath with candles. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Why is that personal? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm talking about being in the bath, but <laughs> there you go. No, honestly, um, I could get a, I could get a bath, candles, music on. Um, I love to make a a, a nice meal. Mm. Uh, like I said, I, I love to go for walks uh, in the park. Um, meditation, smelling sticks on, um, but just doing things for myself. Um, making myself feel good and connected, okay? Um, that's not to say that I'm this guy that wears this white gown all the time. I'm not like that, but that's if I just want to feel connected, all right? Because I'll go out with the lads and have a beer. I'll go and have a burger. I'll go have a pizza. I can, like I said, jump out of airplanes and go skydiving. So, But this is the other side of me that then needs to be connected for me to be able to do that kind of thing as well, right? Mm. Um, not constantly be busy. So... Um, being out in the in the in nature for me is a, is a big thing. I love being in nature and just uh, there's a beautiful park near me. And we've got three lakes in there, right? And it's just such an amazing place to sit in the middle of the three lakes and just just be in awe of what nature is, right? Mm -hmm. And just to be there, read a book in nature. Wow. How if your life is that bad, give it a go. How bad can it? How, how worse can your life get? <laughs> don't start poo poo in my life if your life's shit right now <laughs> right so so get out there get a book read get into nature right just feel the closeness to nature you know and take time for yourself whatever it is for you mm. you know because you know what whatever i like to do might not be whatever you like to do okay but whatever it is that uh carol or john or jack or jill or tom likes to do do it so what's coming up next for you? Ooh, well, mm, outside of COVID. Um, okay. Yeah, or inside of COVID, you know, like, you know, there's, right. there's, there's an opportunity on, on the back of every disaster, you know, the people sure. out there getting rich. Sure, well, <laughs> we're still doing the, uh, the, the mentoring so people can still uh, be mentored through this and that's online, of course, we can still do that. Mm. Um, but I've also created physical uh, days as well. And of course, this only applies really when the COVID's gone and whatever. But these physical days are the empowerment days. And these are for people who have got dreams that have never achieved them, right? So the people who may be stuck in relationships that um, say, so I've got this dream, but I'll never achieve it. Well, when you get yourself to these empowerment days, these are like 10 hour intense days of where you learn coping strategies, techniques, and tools that you're given um and there's myself there and two other coaches and um and you get to like break demons you know break through demons and barriers of fears and limited beliefs so you know those limiting beliefs that don't em empower you well mm -hmm. and these days are going to empower you and uh, so you'll be breaking arrows with the soft part of your throat so you'll be walking on broken glass you'll be breaking boards with your hand and and it'll all culminate the day will finish with a uh, a big firewalk Wow. okay um and those physical things that i've just mentioned is not really to show off but they are actually um really um it's the mental toughness needed to do that right so if you imagine standing at the foot of the firewalk right with the mental toughness it needs to get across that you can take that into then every other avenue of your life hmm. right and it's the mental approach to everything so it's about changing the mindset right so you know, so you, you're going to get thrown an abundance of crap in your life, right? So it's how you deal with things. It's your perception of that situation and how you deal with it. Mm. Good. So where can people find you? Can you share your social media and your websites and anything else? Sure. 
Sure. So I'm on social media. Um, so my Facebook page is Jason Archdale. And I believe I've Googled this. I believe there are two of us in this world, Jason Archdale. So if you Google Jason Archdale, it's the good looking one. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so I'm on there, Jason Archdale. On my Jason Archdale page, you will see uh, my other business page, which is how to achieve your dreams. Um, also on there, you will see my social media page of um, Sam Suicide Awareness Movement. That'd be cool if you could um, follow those, like, share, whatever. My website, you can also get me on there. All the information about what I do, the mentoring, the coaching, the suicide awareness, it's all on my website at www.jasonarchdale.com. Perfect. Well, I just want to say thank you, Jason, for agreeing to come and speak to me on her conversations and have a wide and varied conversation today. So it's, it's been great. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me on. And I hope um, what we've talked about today will go some ways to helping, inspiring and empowering people to push on with their life. Thank you, Jason, for being a guest on this week's Her Conversations. And thank you for listening. You can find out more about me on my website, which is carolmaywittick.com. That's C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. I'm on Facebook under the same name. And if you look for Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K on Twitter, Instagram and Parlour, you can find me there. So until next week, take care. Thank you. Thank you.